Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. You say, Pastor, what is the wrong song? We've been singing the song of poverty. Angel of riches. The sing, singing of songs of sickness and disease. That's all we talk about before God. We talk to God about our problems. Yes, God knows about your problems, but he said, it is finished. It is the reversal of every misfortune. Jesus came to break the stronghold of the curse. I have no business repeating curse words. Or you think curse words are just F this and F that? No, curse words are talking, I am so broke and I'm so poor. That's a curse word. The curse word is, oh, my cancer. Mm. The planet. The star. The sickness. The whatever. What does the word of God say? At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why? He has a name that is above every other name. His name is above what? Every other name. Therefore, every other name must confess. They must bow. And if cancer is a name, then it must be under that name. I must bow to that name. It's a new regime. And there's a new sheriff in town. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is my breakthrough God. He has a plan for my life that cannot be sabotaged by the devil or any of his cohorts. Hallelujah. What does the word of God say? That's a new song I got to sing, saints. That's a new song. I, I have no other song to sing but the new song. Sing that new song unto the Lord. Declare the decrees of the Lord. We're not praying anything to become. We are praying to affirm and enforce as commanders what God has already done so that it stays. Did you hear it? So that it what? Stays. God does not contradict himself. I command it, it stayed. I spoke it. Let me tell you something. This, this is a, a, a very, uh, I'm going to share something with you right now that's of utmost importance. I want you to listen to this very clearly. Many years ago, I was in San Bernardino. Some of you have heard this story. But this part, I've not repeated often, maybe once or maybe twice. I was in San Bernardino when God picked me up by the Spirit and brought me to San Bernardino, California. God picked me up by the Spirit and brought me to Winnipeg. I didn't know it was Winnipeg. I didn't know it was Winnipeg until I arrived here, and I didn't even know that it was Winnipeg until maybe three, four years later. Brought me from San Bernardino to a place um, at the corner of Atsom and Pipeline. And when he brought me there, all I saw were tumbling weeds and it was windy. It was windy. It was a wilderness. Yeah. And I'm there standing and God spoke to me and said, 
can there be life here? That's what he said to me. And it took me back to the experience of, of Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37, when God brought him to the valley of dry bones. So I spoke back to God in King James language. I said to God, thou knowest. <laughs> and the Lord said, say, let there be life. So I said, let there be life. And this city sprung around me. I was in a city. I saw the bus line, the bus running. I saw the bus stop. I saw the buildings, everything. Now, but that's the part that you know so far. They, I believe, rode with us. That particular property was close to, uh, was just off um, um, Lila. Pipeline and Lila. So we were driving, we were doing like a Jericho match, driving around the property. And as we're driving, I saw the building. I saw this huge building in the property. It was there. And the next thing I saw, shh, it went off. I said, what was that? I saw the building. And now it's not there. My son, my oldest son, had seen that same building. And that's how I got to know that that's where it was that I was. Because we're driving with Sister Esme, going to a Bible study, and my son, who was about three, four years old, the bag in his um, car seat, points to an empty field and said, Daddy, Jesus Castle, Jesus Castle. And Sister Esme and I were looking at an empty field. He was seeing it. We didn't see it. I finally see the building and shh. I did not know. When that happened, I did everything I could in the natural to see if we can buy the property. But a company called Genstar or whatever it is, probably bought that whole segment. And instead of a church being in that corner, there are single-dwelling homes and all kinds of... It's developed. I lost the place. How did I lose it? I lost it because I did not sit in the seat of the commander. It's not that that property didn't have a church building. It's that I did not know the secret of the kingdom to enforce what was and is. That's how many times we lose. Not because it was not God's will, but because we did not take the seat of the commander. That's why God says that you are called to reign and rule with him. You reign and you rule with the Lord. And you're doing that now. I said, you are doing that when? Now. It is not to come. You're doing it now. You're called to do that now. I'm called to do that now. I'm called to declare the decrees of the Lord now. I'm called to change my atmosphere now. I'm not called to wait. I'm called to the now. When you lose what God has for you, you really don't lose it. You really don't lose it. It sprouts back. It comes back to you. And as it comes back to you, seize the opportunity to enforce the will of God. What swung away from you swings back to you. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. What swings away from you, swings back to you. Catch it. Amen. I know. 
I know, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it, and God doeth it that men shall fear before him. And then verse 15 says, That which had been, past tense, is what? Now. now. And that which is to be, that is future, hath already been, which is past. And God required that which is past. But that which is past is what? Now. It's all now. Now faith. Now faith. Don't undo your faith by reminding yourself of past failures or past disappointments. Remind yourself that whatever the situation is, God is a God of the second chance. He'll give you another opportunity. I learned from that experience, hey, wait a minute, when God is doing something, when God is saying something, sit at the seat of the commander and begin to command that that which you have seen is made manifest. Amen. I see it show up. Yes. Call those things which be not as though they... And now, take a hold of it. That is singing a new song. You see, I was restricting myself to singing a new song based on Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. I thought that's what he was talking about. And yes, it was talking about that. But God was saying much more than that. He's saying, I want you to sing a new song. The song of celebration, not the song of war. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. Amen. Hallelujah. Sing a new song. That's what God is calling you and I to. Let me wrap up by going to Psalm 96. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen. His wonders among all people. For the Lord is what? Great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord. Watch this now. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and what? Strength. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. <laughs> He's going to define it very clearly to us. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name, colon, bring an offering and come into his courts. God says, you want to give me glory? Bring the offering. <laughs> you know why people don't bring the offering? They sing in an old song. I don't have. How am I going to pay my bills? And God says, quit that. Sing a new song. I still take five loaves and two fishes and get you going back home with 12 baskets. After I fed 5,000 hungry men, not counting the women and the children, sing a new song. I have, therefore I give. Give unto the Lord the glory due 
unto his name. You know, let me say something to you. It's important not to get God upset. Say, what do you mean by that? I'll tell you something. It is not what a man has or doesn't have that matters, but the heart that is behind the giving. He washed the giving of his people and he took note of a widow that brought in two mites. Are you with me? And he said that that woman who gave her might outgave all the wealthy guys that came with their bags of money to mice because she gave what? All. It's not the amount. So, somebody can come and give you two dollars and it is everything they've got and that two dollars is what more than a million dollars. Amen? But if you've got a million dollars and you come and you give two dollars, that's an insult. Do you understand? That is what? An insult. I know you can give me ten dollars. And say, Pastor, I want to bless you with, with this. This is ten dollars. I said, thank you so very much. I know you can give me ten dollars. And you come with some... Um, Canadian one cent that isn't even being used anymore. <laughs> Say, Pastor, here, yeah, that's an insult. You know what that generates? It generates not the blessing, it generates a curse. If you are going to give God something, give Him that which is due Him, that which honors Him. You don't give to God because you want, you know, Trudeau to give you a tax receipt. Bye bye. You give because you want to honor God. God says, This is how you're going to declare my glory. This is how you're going to sing a new song. This is how you're going to move in a dimension that is in the level of the extraordinary. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established. That it shall not be moved. How? You sit in the seat of the commander. Hmm. The earth is not going to be moved because you're sitting in the seat of the commander. Just like God did speak and commanded and it stayed. You are going to go among the heathen and you're going to say, The Lord reigneth the world also shall be established. Why? Because you are saying, the Lord reigns. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's in control. I'm not going to push a panic button about who won the election. The Lord reigns. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen? He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice, rejoice before the Lord. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Amen. What song am I going to sing? A new song. This new song 
It's about God being in total control. And it's in total control because the government shall be upon his what? Shoulders. And that shoulder is called the church. For he's the head. And we are the body. Hear this. God isn't going to do anything here. While you and I are waiting for God to come do something, he's waiting for us to do something. Because he has already done his part. And now he's waiting for you and I to do our part. But we are trying to push the envelope back to God. And God says, uh uh your turn. My turn? Yes, your turn. Um, but that means I'm going to be acting like God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh! I created you in the image and the likeness of me, God. Yeah. I gave you an example. I said, what do you name this? Goat, that's the name. That one. Elephant, that's the name. Whatever it is that you call it, that's what I call it. My oldest grandson called me Ampa and called Mama Amma. Guess what? When I'm talking, this is Ampa. <laughs> Whatever he called me, that's what my name is. Hello. He couldn't say grand. He said Am. <laughs> so Ampa it is. God is saying, what do you call it? He presented this island to see what he will call it. God is presenting you and I opportunities and saying, what do you call this? Oh, financial problems. Say, okay, that's what it is, financial problems. Or, oh, praise you, Lord. Thank you that I am going to see the manifestation of your glory, your wealth, and your resources in this situation. I bless you, O oh God. Thou art worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My needs are met. My needs are met. Every situation in my life is fixed. The Lord is God. He is my shepherd. I shall never lack. It's a new song. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready for this? Okay. Take me back to Psalm 2 and stand up with me. Verse I'm going to read verse 1, 2, 3, and then verse 4. Why did you heed and rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. They're congregating together. They are planning together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder. Let us break their bands so it is not just the Lord, but he is what? Anointed. Who are the anointed of the Lord? Let us break their bands asunder. The enemy knows that it is the Lord and us. Hello? The enemy knows that. It is the what? The Lord and what? Us. Whatever you bind... It's bound. Both God and us. And cast away their courts from us. Verse 4. He that seated in the heavens shall what? He that 
What? He that seated in the heavens. Where are you seated? Shall what? Shall what? Shall what? Shall what? Shall what? No, no, no. no. <laughs> you didn't get it yet. Shall what? I didn't say mimic the sound. Nobody laughs, ha, ha, ha. He that seated in the heaven shall what? <laughs> Why are you laughing at? You're laughing at the foolishness of the enemy who thinks that he's going to be free and you're going to be in bondage. No, I am the blessed and you know it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And force as a commander because you are seated and you say look at you foolishness look look you are the manifestation of foolishness you think you're going to do anything plan all you want it is a total mess dig the biggest fattest deepest hole you've fallen into it and you shall never be able to come out of it so dig and god sits and you sit, and you both are doing what? <laughs> Woo! Yes. That's the new song. When the enemy brings trouble your way, start laughing. Start laughing. Start laughing. Start laughing. The devil is not in control. God is, and so are you. Amen. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries, Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Called to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.